Hello, everybody, and welcome to our 2024 NCAC Summer Camping Webinar Series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about our high adventure programs. It looks like our numbers have stopped increasing, so everybody was prompt and on time, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, today, we're going to be talking about our uh, council-based uh, high adventure programs, as well as those that are offered by the Greater Boy Scouts of America with our national programs. Um, before we get started, I'm going to take a moment and ask that we go around the room, um, our Zoom room, to meet all of our presenters. My name is Elizabeth Warren, and I am the director of the Goshen Scout Reservation for National Capital Area Council, which is home to Lent Hawks and High Adventure. And I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Hello, I'm the camping specialist for Goshen Scout Reservation. Uh, my name is Sarah, and I'll turn it over to Dan. Hi, uh, my name's Dan. I am the Camp Director for Lynn Hawks and High Adventure down at Goshen Scout Reservation. This is my uh, second year as Camp Director, and I'm really looking forward to it and answering any questions you have. I'm going to bring it over to Mark. Hi. How do I jump to me? Oh, you're, you're jumped over. Go ahead and introduce oh, yourself. I didn't, oh, sorry. I didn't see my picture show up. <laughs> I'm Mark Ray. I'm the High Adventure Committee Chairman for the National Capital Area Council. Um, in addition to the Hoxha program that we that we promote, um, we also promote the other four High Adventure bases, Philmont Sea Base, the Summit, and Northern Tier. Um, we run provisional crews to all the High Adventure bases, including both Lund Hoxha programs. So if you have scouts or Scouters who are looking for provisional opportunities, uh, don't have a crew together, let us know what we can do to help you out. We also provide training throughout the year for the, the national high adventure bases. So uh, in terms of introduction, that's great. And I'll turn it back over. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, so this webinar is going to kind of be in three different parts. The first one, we're going to um, turn to Dan and learn all about the Loon Hawks and High Adventure backpacking and canoeing trek programs that are offered at NCAC. Um, from there, we'll turn to Mark, and Mark's going to tell us um, some introductory information about our national high adventure-based programs, such as Philmont, Sea Base, Northern Tier, and Summit Bechtel Reserve, as well as share some of the current offerings that are available through the High Adventure Committee. And both Dan and Mark will be touching on provisional camping programs, um, which is camping programs for individual scouts to attend without their units. Um, if you have any questions, we do have a Q&A portion that will end uh, part three of our webinar. Uh, there is a Q&A box um, as part of your Zoom screen. So please, as you have questions and they come, uh, go ahead and put them in there. And um, you know we may respond to it in the chat um, area or we'll respond to it live, um, but that'll be at the end of the webinar. Um, if you have missed the other parts of our webinar series, again, this is part three of a three-part series, um, we do have uh, a section all about Cub Scout summer camp programs, and then another one all about Scouts BSA summer camp programs with the National Capital Area Council. Those are available on the NCAC blog spot, We Own Adventure. Um, and if you know of any leaders who wanted to be here tonight but couldn't, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on there as well. Okay, I think that's enough of me chatting, um, and I will turn it over to Dan to talk about Lone Hawks and High Adventure. Hi. All right. Um, I think, yep, there's the slideshow. So uh, on Hawks and High Adventure, uh, we have two different distinct treks. We have a backpacking trek and a canoeing trek. More on those in a second. Uh, we're the NCAC's own uh, in-council high adventure camp. So if uh, you don't necessarily have the money to fly out to Philmont, uh, you know, we're, we're closer. Um, so we are part of Goshen Scout Reservation down in Goshen, Virginia. Uh, if you punch in uh, Lund Hoxon, it drops a pin right at Camp Baird, which is the base camp where our program is based out of. Uh, the reservation itself is 3,000 acres of land right by the George Washington uh, Forest, uh, 35,000 acres of beautiful state game land. So uh, if we could get the next slide. Thank you. Yep. So uh, the backpacking trek, that's uh, one of our units on the uh, one of the many trails around uh, Lund Hawks and around Goshen. Uh, and uh, so for the backpacking trek, more on the canoeing trek later, uh, it's a plan your own adventure. We have several different types of outposts that they can attend uh, and they 
units, your units would fill out a survey saying we're interested in caving, mountain man, foxfire, what have you. Uh, and our track director will say, well, on Monday, you can go here, Tuesday, you can go here, Wednesday, and so on. Uh, but it's up to your unit how you want to get there. Do you want to hike all the way around the lake? Do you want to go up a mountain and then back down? Do you want to drop your stuff off at your outpost? It's up to you. You get to choose your own adventure. So you'll tailor your route to fit your experience, your goals. Some units don't want to hike a whole lot. Some units are all about hiking and anyone in between, everyone is welcome. So you'll have five days and four nights on the trail. You're hiking Monday through Friday and you're spending Monday through Thursday out at an outpost or out on the reservation. Uh, Sunday, your arrival day, you get orientated, you get an orient. You get an orientation to the uh, uh, camp and uh, what to expect on the trail. And Friday, you're back at the base camp with Saturday heading on to your next adventure. Dan, since you were talking about orientation, would you mind sharing us with us? Because, um, you know, this isn't just specific to backpacking. Mm -hmm. The canoeing truck is going to do some of these um, orientation uh, round robins, as we call them as well. What are some of mm -hmm. those key topics that you learn as a part of your round robin stations? All right. Uh, well, it's more applicable to the backpacking trek than the canoeing trek, but we do talk about how to set up a bear line. Uh, some of our other orientation stations uh, would include uh, planning your route, which is very important if you're about to head out on the trail the very next day. Uh, we also visit our quartermaster to make sure you are supplied with the food you'll be eating with uh, multiple ways to filter or purify your water with uh, the importance of purifying your water. Uh, we, like I said, you get your food, uh, we take you to your site where you'll stay Sunday night and Friday night. We also, uh, oh gosh. Um, now well, there's there's also, that. there's health and safety. We're talking health about and health safety, and safety. Of course. And on the river, as well as, um, you know, setting up mm -hmm. a campsite, leave no trace policy. So I just, I wanted to bring that to people's attention where um, we absolutely encourage you to be familiar with these topics ahead of time before you arrive at Lynn Hoxon, but there is a time to meet with the Lynn Hoxon staff and go over those, um, those topics as well, right before you hit on the trail. And those are touched in our leader's guide as well. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll let you move on. Thank you, Dan. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, this is one of the uh, most stunning vistas at Goshen Scout Reservation. Uh, Weeblos hike it, Scouts BSA hike it. If you're at Lynn Hoxon, odds are very good that you'll hike it. Um, it's about a one and a half mile hike up to the rock from the typical place most units start at down at uh, Camp PMI. And uh, it's uh, you can uh, continue on the trail to jump rock. Uh, it overlooks the whole of the reservation, the lake, the blue part. That's Lake Merriweather, Goshen Scout Reservation. Uh, the brown splotch sort of in the center to the left is Camp uh, Olmstead. And the splotch sort of to the right is, um, you know, Camp Ross. And then uh, the other camps are on this side of the lake, so you can't quite see them through the trees. But it's a beautiful hike, well worth it every single time I've gone, certainly. Um, and you can get a fantastic view of the sunset but you want to make sure you um, know where you're camping. So you might want to have your tent set up before you hike. <laughs> uh, Forge Mountain is on our way to Big Butt Mountain. Uh, that's a view uh, of the, uh, the mountain. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a long hike. If you're going to Forge, odds are it's because you're trying to go to Big Butt. And if you do wind up going to uh, Big Butt and back, that is a long hike long hike so that would be when you are taking a primitive day you're camping out on the trail but it does give you more time to hike it does give you more time for fellowship with your unit and we'll talk about those a bit later on and then this is a view of lake merriweather uh at an aquatics area i want to say this is uh marriott and uh there's some people boating there um and it's it's very nice to see uh so here is our trail building the and hoxon trail uh, and this is Troop 152, who has come uh, multiple times since I started working at Lynn Hawks and since I started working at Goshen. And you can see some familiar faces, and then you can see some different faces, but they do like to uh, take a photo, commemorate it. And there are plenty of wonderful opportunities to get uh, photos to memorialize your time on the Lynn Hawks and Trail or at Goshen. And, you know, feel free to tag us in your social medias.
Yeah, and if I may, uh, a big reason why we like to share this photo, particularly particularly of 152, um, is because the Lynn Hoxson program is definitely, you know, Dan described it as plan your own adventure. That means that it's able to grow with you. So you can take, you know, a group of scouts one year and then come back the following year and it's going to be an entirely different experience based upon the routes that you take, the outpost programs that you're a part of. Um, but we'll let those speak for themselves um, in the next part of our presentation. And also whether or not you're canoeing or backpack. Uh, but we'll talk about the backpacking first. Uh, so we have some historical outposts and we have some technical outposts. Historical outposts take you to the time period uh, that they're uh, set in. So that's uh, the mid 1800s or the turn of the 20th century or way back in medieval times. The technical outposts are more focused on the um, activity, the task at hand. But at either type of outpost, you are getting a terrific experience and a fun activity with a dedicated and knowledgeable staff. So our historical outposts are Mountain Man, Foxfire, and Wood's Edge, which was formerly Robin Hood when I was doing it, but now it is more of a homestead sort of experience. And then our technical outposts are Aquatics, which has uh, canoeing and paddle boarding, as well as a bit of a wading area. And also our COPE course, which is Goshen's COPE course, challenging outdoor personal experience. Uh, there are a number of activities you can do there. Uh, we've brought back caving since the pandemic. Uh, and you go out to a cave about a half hour off the property. We uh, have, uh, we can we can drive some of you if you don't have quite enough vehicles, but we also encourage you to drive your unit if you're coming down and you're not necessarily uh, like a provisional unit that might not have vehicles. Um, and then, uh, like I said, if you're going to Big Butt or if you want the time for your unit, for your fellowship, we also have the opportunity for primitive nights where you're camping uh, on your own out on the trail. And I'll go into each of these outposts now. Uh, so Foxfire, Mountain Man, Woods Edge. Foxfire is our turn of the 20th century Appalachian Forge. It's a replica of it. And uh, you can make S-hooks, J-hooks, knife blades, uh, there's candle making, there's uh, some introductory uh, woodworking things uh, that we can tell you about the uh, like the origins and the uses of those various things. There's also a nice creek to wade in and wash all of the soot off when you're all done at the forge. Uh, mountain Man, uh, we have our 1830s uh, cabin and our mountain men who teach scouts and scouters the uh, fine points of black powder rifle shooting. Uh, you get to throw tomahawks, you learn about trapping and uh, the fur trade, and you also can trade with the mountain men. So if you bring something, it doesn't matter what. So long as you have a good story, you can usually get something good out of the mountain men, even if it's just uh, dessert from the last week uh, that they traded. Uh, Woods Edge, uh, we have archery uh, with... Uh, Recurve bows, we have darts, we have knife throwing, uh, we have bread making, which has been a big hit, and uh, the wonderful staff are very uh, knowledgeable at all three of these outposts. So our technical outposts, aquatics, we have uh, stand-up paddle boards, which you can sit on. You can also lie down on them. Uh, you don't have to stand up on them the whole time, unless you want to. Uh, we have a waiting area there, too, for when you are... Uh, all done being out on the water on the paddle boards or the kayaks. Uh, at our caving outpost, uh, you'll set up at uh, Goshen. You'll set up your tents and what have you. You'll change into your caving clothes. And then you'll go out to the caving outpost. You'll go into the cave. It's uh, a very vast cavernous system. There are a few squeeze spaces, but there are also options to go around those. So it's welcoming to people of all levels of uh, spelunking or caving experience. And uh, then we'll bring you back to base camp. You can shower, you can get all of the mud and muck off of you, and then you'll head back to your campsite for dinner and uh, relaxation. Uh, our cope course, we have a giant swing, we have a leap of faith, we, faith, we have many uh, high ropes elements, many low ropes elements, and we also have uh, team building exercises and activities in addition to the climbing wall. It's more than you can do in a day. So uh, check in with your COPE staff when you arrive at the outpost and uh, we'll make sure to get you on whatever uh, you want as best we can. Uh, time and weather permitting at all of these, of course. Um, and then uh, primitive night is uh, if, if you are doing the hike to Big Butt or if you just want to have some time for your unit, some fellowship, it's Beautiful country out in Goshen. 
uh, we'll just make sure that you're somewhere where you can have some uh, water, either fresh or water that you can purify. And, uh, you know, the night is yours. I just wanted to pipe in and, and share uh, the Hawks and programs, uh, as you'll, you'll start to learn, um, we really use them to promote um, opportunity or, or to prepare units to go to those larger high adventure experiences that we'll chat about more later, like Philmont and Northern Tier. But that means that you know, Lynn Hoxon is a smaller program, but that also means that it can be a far more personal experience. So when we're talking about blacksmithing at Foxfire, every single scout is going to have the opportunity to be in that forge for as long as they want. Whereas um, at a program like Philmont, that's not as always possible. Um, with the number of units that are in place. And so we, we keep each of our outposts to one crew per night. Um, you know, and, and that means that it's just you and the staff and the program. Um, and it's a great way to, to really bond and, and uh, fully experience those. So that's that's something that we're really proud of at Lynn Hawks and is that personal experience that we provide. Uh, and then uh, we'll talk about the other aspect of Lynn Hawks and the James River Canoe Track. So if... Uh, you don't necessarily want to break in your boots. You can go on the James River. Uh, so we partner with Twin River Outfitters in Buchanan, Virginia. And there's over 61 miles of the upper James River. Uh, so your Sunday, your Friday, your Saturday are all pretty much the same as the uh, um, base camp backpacking trek experience. You arrive, you settle in, you get your orientation stations. We make sure you know where you're going, how you're going to get there, what you're going to need. Um, and then Monday morning, You'll travel to the outfitter with our River Trek guide. We'll get you all checked in and squared away on your boats. You're going to be in canoes Monday through Thursday. Friday, the last day, you'll be in kayaks. So uh, we want to make sure that everybody is a swimmer uh, because those single person boats, those kayaks at the end of the week, uh, you've got to be a swimmer. Uh, so there are hundreds of class one rapids, uh, several challenging class two rapids. And we also have the uh, Balcony Falls Rapids, which you'll see uh, during your uh, trek uh, along the river. Uh, the Outfitter does have a number of campgrounds along the way. So you'll be traveling to and from each of those uh, campgrounds. And the Outfitters will make sure that your vehicles are waiting for you uh, where you uh, disembark on Friday to return to uh, base camp to return to Goshen. Uh, it is a wonderful experience, and you can definitely see through the photos uh, on these slides, you know, that it's it's beautiful country. Uh, so you'll have a staff guide, and actually we need to edit this part, and I forgot about that. That's my apologies. Uh, we've talked with uh, Twin River Outfitters, and we're going to have a staff guide with you for the whole week, uh, which is uh, something I'm very excited about. Uh, it, in the past, it's been just the first two days, but now we've got them for all week. Uh, so you'll earn your 50 miler award. This is one of the best rivers uh, in the Atlantic on the East Coast to get this award. Uh, you get tons of whitewater rapids and a lovely uh, tour along the Blue Ridge Mountains following the scenic uh, Upper James River. Uh, and like I said, on Friday, you do get to go kayaking. All right, so here's a view from overhead. And as you can see, they're coming up on some rapids. Uh, you've got some in canoes, some in kayaks, and they just have a blast. And this would be the Balcony Falls Rapids, which, um, you know, depending on the water level, depending on the day, depending on the route through the rapids you take. Uh, so we do encourage you to... Uh, you know, plan your routes ahead of time before you just go for it. All right. Uh, so uh, we do have some itinerary updates. Uh, instead of um, uh, swapping out just on the last day, uh, they, uh, they, they come in uh, the afternoon when you arrive at uh, your stop for Thursday night, they'll swap your boats out then. Uh, and the shuttle drivers will also make sure that your vehicles head on down to your final Friday stop. So Friday, that way you can just pack up, hit in the kayaks, reach where your vehicles are, and then you're just good to go. You're good to come back to Lenhoxon for a closing campfire. I'm anticipating a few questions that may come this way because I know that quite a few of um, you know, our participants in, in today's Zoom session are coming specifically to learn about the Lenhoxon canoeing track. Um, so on, on Thursday, and this was a change as of this year, um, previously, uh, 
But again, we we go canoeing at Alma James River for the first four days of your trek, that Monday through Thursday, and then Friday has been canoeing and Twin River Outfitters comes and brings you boats. Um, they want to help your process be a little more efficient, especially when it comes to getting home or, you know, coming back to us for closing campfire at, at Lon Hawks and at Camp Baird. Um, so instead, Twin River Outfitters on Thursday, they will be coming to the campground that you were um, assigned to be at for Thursday night any drivers um, w within your unit will then uh, be taken back to Buchanan, um, for Virginia, where Twin River Outfitters is based and where your vehicles will have been left for when you arrived at, at Twin River Outfitters. And they will then allow you to drive back to the campsite. Um, and after your end point on Friday at what we call that takeout point, um, Twin River Outfitters will bring a shuttle and bring you back to that campsite from Thursday night. And so that you're able to leave directly from that campsite uh, and come back to Camp Baird. So we're hoping that that, um, you know, helps to to free up some time, um, both to, to you and the, the outfitters itself. Um, if you're looking for a full version of this itinerary and want to see, you know, what is the entire week going to be like, um, go to the Lynn Hawkson website. We'll share that as, as a resource um, in a few slides. And there is a um, both a backpacking and a river trek leader's guide. And the leader's guide uh, gives specific information on your itinerary um, for the entire week, gives some details about the campgrounds, but Dan will be sending you out more specific information about campgrounds closer to that week on the trail or on the river. Um, and from there, it also has, yeah, Dan's got a copy right now. Um, it looks a lot it, like this. Yes. Um, and it also has information more specifically about different awards that we have at Lund Hawkson. So for the river track, it's going to talk about how you can earn that 50 mile reward, including the conservation portion. Um, and same with uh, the backpacking side, there are lots of different awards that are detailed in there. All right. Yep. And uh, so that's uh, the entrance to our cave. Uh, so for visual opportunities, this is for individual scouts. We have this year uh, luckily, both a uh, canoeing uh, trek and a backpacking trek. We also have the GOAT crew, uh, which stands for Goshen Order of the Arrow Trail Crew. This is great for provisional scouts. It's made up of a provisional group of scouts each year uh, who are members of the Order of the Arrow. You get two weeks of camping for $200, food included. Um, the first week, you do some trail work, uh, and uh, you get to make friends from all over the council who are members of the OA. Um, and that's the week then uh, that everybody is uh, setting up their camp. So you'll get a sort of behind the scenes look at the Len Hawks and staff at the setup process. And then uh, your second week on the GOAT crew is the first week of campers. And it, it's just a regular Len Hawks and Trek. We put the GOAT crew in first for backpacking and uh, they get to do the course twice and they have a lot of fun. Uh, you must be... Uh, 14 by September 1st of the year you're going, uh, which is one year older than normal for Lynn Hoxon, but you are doing a whole lot of trail and conservation work for that first week. So we want you to just be a little bit older, hopefully, you know, a little bit bigger and stronger and more able to handle uh, that rigor and physical strain. Uh, and then our provisional backpacking trek, this is sponsored by, thank you, Mark, the uh, High Adventure Committee. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet other scouts from across the council while exploring the Goshen Wilderness. So our provisional backpacking track is week one. Uh, that's June 23rd through the 29th, and registration is live. We have uh, enough to meet the uh, minimum, and we have more spots available. So if there are youth, if there are adults who want to go, but they can't quite get their whole unit, please consider the provisional backpacking track or the provisional canoeing trek, which is not week one, but is in fact week three. This is July 7th through the 13th. And like with the provisional backpacking trek, there are spots available. Uh, it's an opportunity to meet other scouts from across the council while going on the James River, which we uh, just talked about. Uh, it's a ton of fun, same as the backpacking, same as the goat crew, same as any trek you could have at Lynn Hoxon. And fun fact for our attendees, Mark Ray, who's, uh, you know, here presenting with us about high adventure programs and, and uh, you know, across the country will be leading this canoeing track. And Mark, this is your second year leading the provisional canoeing track, correct? You're muted. Lots of background noise where I am. No, uh, I did a 22 provisional track. We had actually 15 people on the river. Uh, it was an outstanding trip. It was the most laid back high adventure trip I've ever been on. The 
the most challenging thing I did all week was pull my boat out of the river, set up my tent and wait for the scouts to cook dinner. So yeah, it was awesome. Uh, highly recommend it. It's quite a trip and it's a lot of fun. And you do get a chance to complete from start to finish the 50 mile award with conservation. Great. Yeah, that's that's the best testimonial that we could ask for. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. And then uh, just some general information about Goshen in general before moving up to high adventure uh, in a broader sense. So uh, participants for Lund Hoxton, you must be 13 by September 1st, 2024, or September 1st of any future year if you're signing up for the future. Uh, crew size, we want a minimum of six participants. That's at least two adults and then four youth, but you can have more adults and more youth up to uh, ideally 12. Uh, we want a bit more participants for the canoe treks because our outfitter, they like larger groups. And also it's to, uh, you know, make sure you have some boats and some buddy boats. You want to have buddy boats and not just buddies in your boat. Uh, our maximum crew size that we want to shoot for is 12 participants to lessen our impact on the trails. Um, because we are conservation minded, we do like to leave no trace. Uh, if you do have larger groups that you want to bring to Goshen, we can split up your crews or we can maybe accommodate slightly larger crews in one go. But you also want to make sure that you have sufficient adult leadership. Uh, you So 13 by September 1st, at least six people, hopefully no more than 12. And you also need your completed BSA medical forms, parts A, B, and C, as well as the NCAC health advisory, which says you're you know, out in the sun, you're exerting yourself. It's uh, strenuous. Please be advised. And that all of that is on our website, gogotion.org. So our summer schedule for uh, this year, for this is for Lynn Hoxon specifically, uh, week one, June 23rd through 29th, uh, we're pretty much almost full everywhere. And then for the rest of the summer, the river treks this year are already full. Uh, so you can join in on the provisional trek or you can start to try and save your place next year for the river trek. However, uh, there are some openings left on the trail for weeks two through five, which is that um, first week of July leading in from June, the 30th through the 6th, and then pretty much all the rest of July, that's weeks three, four, and five. Uh, come on, join us at Goshen for that last week of June and all of July uh, with another week for Camp Ross the Cub Scouts. Uh, so our registration costs, um, the price per camper, for our deposit scout, you just need one to save your spot. Uh, if you pay by October 31st, your first youth, you get uh, $35 off of the regular price or $5 off of the early bird discount price. Our early discount price, which does ex uh, does end April 12th, so it's coming up. Um, early bird is $4.75 for youth, $2.30 for an adult. But you get your first two adults free no matter when you sign up. And also, if you do pay by the early bird, you get a free Goshen hat. Um, and then the regular price, which would be after April 12th, that is $505 for the youth and $270 for the adult, which is $40 more for the adults and $30 more for the youth. So there is an incentive to sign up before April 12th and pay, and it's not just a hat. Well, last thing that we don't include as part of this presentation, but there are a series of training requirements that, that are needed for Lynn Hawks and High Adventure crews. Um, that includes wilderness first aid for canoeing tracks. It includes paddlecraft safety, which Mark also does a lot of the instruction for through our aquatics committee with the council. Um, for more specific information on that, please go to our website, which we're about to share in one of the next slides, but I'll let Dan talk about um, staffing first, because I know this is a plug he's always excited for. I am still hired. Um, if uh, you want to personally know the Trek director or the uh, River Trek guide that's going on the river with you, uh, we can hire them. Uh, so at gotogoshen.org slash staff, um, you can uh, look at our available job uh, openings, our job descriptions, our listings. I personally, for Lynn Hoxton, would love to have a Trek director who organizes the treks. I'd love to have a river trek director who goes on the river with your units and make sure that you're all safe and having fun. Uh, I'm still searching for a proper mountain man director, uh, an aquatics director who does not necessarily need to be over 21. They can be over 18. And then um, I actually have an interview after this for one of my last few outpost assistants. I have so many outpost assistants. I'm doing real well on those. But if you have more people, I'm always happy to interview. And Dan and I both, um, you worked at Lynn Hawkson for, for uh, quite a while. So, um, if you Robin ever, 
and Robin Hood and as well. Director. <laughs> and director. And yeah. director. Um, so, you know, we, we always have lots of things to talk about for staff. Um, if you need any more specific information about Lynn Hawks and High Adventure, um, please join us on our website at www.gotogoshen.org slash Lenhoxen. You can also just go to gotogoshen.org and Lenhoxen will be one of those um, key ones. So go ahead and take a photo of this. Um, our email is also pretty easy to remember, lenhoxen at gotogoshen.org, and that'll send you straight over to Dan. Um, if you're looking for updates, um, we do have a Facebook. We're primarily active on our Goshen Scout Reservation Facebook page. Um, and also we have a YouTube. So go on to YouTube and type in Goshen Scout Reservation. And there is a new video that just went up specifically about Lynn Hawks and High Adventure and a crew that hiked all the way to Big Butt, which is you know, about it was about 16 miles round trip for them over a day. Um, so it's really inspiring, really cool to see. Um, so we'd love to have some footage about our River Trek crew. Maybe that's something we can do um, this summer. Thank you so much, Dan, for talking with us about Lynn Hawkson. Thanks for having me. Mark, over to you. All right, thank you very much. So let's talk about the big bases. <clears throat> Philmont Scout Ranch, Sea Base. Northern Tier and Bechtel Summit. Um, I am a Philmont guy. I've been uh, a bunch of times, and I have yet to go to the other two. So I have a uh, have to lean on some other folks for that. But I'm the High Adventure Committee Chairman for NCAC, so I'm available to answer questions for you. Uh, I'll probably say this a few times, but if you have a crew going to a High Adventure base and you'd like to get some specialized training please reach out to us. We're more than happy to visit a meeting, visit a crew meeting, uh, possibly go on a hike with you or a canoe trip or a, uh, any type of training activity you want. We'll be more than happy to join you with that. Uh, so what is high adventure? What's the definition of high adventure? Multi-day excursions in a remote location. So uh, Len Hoxon does is a remote location. So it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, like hiking around the neighborhood. So it's definitely meets that criteria as well as the others too. Usually change campsites day to day. Absolutely. Uh, James River does that, Little Hoxton does that, and certainly um, Philmont Northern Tier do that. Uh, more challenging environments. Uh, if you've ever been to Northern Tier, you'll know that that's quite a challenging environment, especially when you're carrying those canoes over the mountains out there. So um, it's a it's a team building and a, and a, a good experience for scout leadership. Uh, pack much lighter since you carry everything. Um, one of the things that we do on the High Adventure Committee is we provide training on what type of gear you need, what the best gear is, what gear is going to get you through a trek, and we're more than happy to talk to you about that. Um, either inside the BSA Safety Net or do it yourself. The High Adventure Committee is sponsoring this year a trip to Wyoming River Wind River Range. Um, we have a, a five-day trek scheduled in June, one of our High Adventure Committee chair, uh, co committee members is doing a trip to the Wyoming Winter Range. It's it's uh it's all by the High Adventure Committee um, under the cap of MCAC, but um, it's not a standard High Adventure based trip. So that's that's what we call to do it yourself. Next slide, please, Elizabeth. Thank you. So here's the big guys: Philmont, New Mexico, Northern Tier, Minnesota. Uh, the Bechtel Summit Ring in uh, West Virginia, and of course Sea Base, which is which is in Florida, but also there's a Keys Adventure, there's a St. Thomas Adventure, so there's lots of lots of opportunities for sailing, snorkeling, and those types of activities. Philmont's primarily backpacking. Northern Tier is all about canoeing. Uh, you also have the localized bases that you can see there. Um, we have one crew from the National Capillary Council High Adventure that's going to the Montana High Adventure Base, which is uh, pretty much the, the the deepest wilderness you can get into the United States. Um, we have, a, I know of a few crews that are going to the main high adventure base this summer. There's also the Adirondacks, um, one that's kind of new that we hadn't heard about before, but uh, it's been getting lots of press. It's called Swamp Base in Louisiana. That's a council uh, high adventure base similar to the Lenhoxon program. So um, that's a that's that's a lot of fun down there as well. We get we get a lot of press from those guys, and of course our own favorite, like Len Hawks, in there at Goshen, Virginia. Elizabeth. 
So here's the ways you can go. You can go on a high adventure track with your unit and we can help you set up a unit trip uh, through the high adventure committee. Uh, we do run contingent crews to the high adventure bases. So we can essentially be a one-stop shop for you where if you're going to Philmont or the tier wherever or well, sea base, uh, we can we have a travel agent that can set up your airfare. We can find lodging for you. We can set it up with all your transportation. Essentially, pay one price, get a get a a, a wrapped up uh, program. So, or you can go as an individual. Um, they talked earlier about the O eight the the uh, goat crew at Goshen, which is a provisional. We're running provisional at at uh, James River. We're running provisional at at. Uh, at Lone Hawks and backpacking this year, but there are also provisional treks at Philmont and Northern Tier. So we can run a provisional crew. So if you if you yeah. want to go on a trip, then we can usually find a crew going that that can uh, fit you in. Or if you need, if you want to plan a trip and you need to add some people, the High Adventure Committee does maintain a vacancy list. So we can find folks, usually find folks that are looking to join a trip. So don't feel like if you you're the only guy out there that wants to go on a trip, uh, there's a way for us to get you to high adventure. Don't, don't feel like that. That's not something that we can, we can help you with. Uh, why to go as a provisional? Many units lack the critical mass to conduct their own trip. Or if you don't have uh, scouts, age appropriate scouts, or you have never been before, lack of knowledge. A lot of people are concerned about some of these big high adventure bases is, you know, what do I need to know? How do I go? I've never been there before. Um, please, please reach out to us and let us help you with that information. Um, our goal is to help, help you have the ultimate scouting experience, no matter which high adventure base you attend. Um, consider NCAC high adventure contingent or provisional treks. We accept smaller groups. Uh, Philmont, you can backpack, I believe, with a crew as small as five now. Uh, and they have tracks that are, that are anywhere from 12 days down to seven days. So there's lots of um, lots of opportunity there. Um, unit crews, we can help you with your unit crews as well. And in those unit crews and for the, uh, for, for the council treks, we handle all the planning and logistics. We'll put it, we'll put a trip together for you. Next slide, Elizabeth, please. So we offer training. We just had a Philmont training this past weekend, uh, where we were talking about first date on the trail and, and advisor requirements. Uh, we have advisor hikes. We have two of them in March. Uh, we do those in March so that we can have the advisors out and make sure that they feel like they're in shape for a Philmont trek. So that's important to us. We want to make sure that the adults are ready as well as the scouts. Um, and we have adult advisors and crew leaders that we're always welcome to help you out with any of your training for your unit. So next slide, please. Okay, so here's the ages. Flint Hoxon. Is uh is 13, 13 by the time you buy us, I believe it's September of the year you attend. So essentially, if you have an August birthday and you're 12, you're eligible to attend Lund Hoxon this summer. Uh Sea Base and Bechtel Summit are both 14. Um and then uh you can go as a 14-year-old to Philmont, but a lot of scouts like to get a little bit of a little bit of experience backpacking here on the East coast before they tackle a big, big trip like that. Uh, Adirondacks is a, is a canoe base as well as a hiking base. And Maine high adventure is a paddling trip on the Allagash river. Um, then there's Philmont Northern tier and sea base and Oak pick. Oop. I always have problems. That Oak pick is actually the winter program at Northern tier. So if you'd like to go camping in minus zero degree weather, you can go up to Northern Tier in the wintertime over your holiday break, your winter holiday break. Uh, the cool thing about that is you essentially show up with your base layers and they provide you with all of the clothing, all of the sleeping bags and all of the gear for the entire trip. So you don't have to worry about going out to REI and spending a few thousand dollars on gear that will keep you warm. They have all the gear for you there. Um, they have uh, dog sledding and ice fishing and all that type of thing. And, and uh, if they have enough snow, you get to build a, it's called a Quincy. It's kind of like an, uh, an igloo, but it's it's uh, essentially a, a snow shelter. So uh, lots of cool opportunities here with Oopek at uh, Northern Tier. And uh, Philmont also has a winter trek as well. 
So there's lots of opportunities beyond just the summer treks for those those bases. Mark, before so. we move on, um, I just wanted to, it, I'm anticipating a question that, that somebody might be having at home. Um, so we know that on Hawks and High Adventure, that age requirement is to be 13 by September 1st, that year you're attending. Um, for the rest of these ages, what's that base level requirement versus, um, I think this slide is more of a, we recommend you going around this age, but you don't have to be 16 to go to Philmont, for example. What is that age requirement for our national bases? For for Philmont, you have to be um, fourteen by the time you attend the base. Northern okay. Interiors is is the same, yes. Right, and so, that would yeah. be the same also for Summit and. That, and... That's correct. Perfect. Um, Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so Main High Adventure and Massawipi are both uh, council council bases, uh, so they're not they're not national bases, so they have their own requirements. Um, I'm not familiar specifically with those bases and the requirements, but it's probably fourteen. Most high adventure bases require to be at least fourteen when you attend. So, um, but there's opportunities for any crew of any age to to have a great trip out there. Philmont Scout Ranch, no, largest youth camp in the world. Um, this summer, there will be 15,000 scouts and scouters on the backpacking side of the camp. There's also the, the uh, Philmont Training Center on the other side of the road. So that adds numbers to Philmont as well. Um, it, has, it has experienced over a million scouts hiking the trails at Philmont. Uh, so it's a backpacking in programs, very similar to Hoxon. Uh, the, the miles are longer and the programs are possibly a little bit uh, less less opportunity for scouts uh, than you'd say with Lynn Hoxon. But uh, same same types of programs, gold panning, burrow packing, horse rides, uh, spar pole climbing, all those types of things out there. Um, wide challenges for scouts 14 and up. Um, they have itineraries that range everything from about a 60 mile trek over seven days to a 93 mile trek over 12 days. Um, some of those, including that 12,441 foot elevation gain, uh, very low humidity and very few bugs. Although last year when I was there, I was stunned to be see as many mosquitoes as I've ever seen in Philmont before. I'm guessing it's uh, due to climate change and they had a very wet spring. Uh, they do have fall, spring, and winter activities at Philmont, and the Philmont Training Center, as I said earlier, is a, is across the road for for uh, scouts, scouters taking um, training at the Philmont Training Center. Just so you know, in the Philmont Training Center, um, if you take scout aged youth with you, sons, daughters, there are programs at Philmont on the backpacking side that they can participate in on the for the week while you're in class. So you can go sit in a classroom all week and listen to somebody talk about training and your, and your, your youth can be on the other side of the road, taking a, a, a backpacking trip for five days while they're out there. So lots of opportunities at Philmont. Seabase. Seabase has uh, all kinds of programs, sailing, snorkeling, uh, Bahamas. They also have uh, scuba. They have a STEM program. They have out, out island camping which is where they essentially take you out, drop you off on a deserted island with, with fun yaks and fishing gear and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, lets you, lets you have a week out there doing that. Um, and then they have spring break activities. So long about the middle of March when it's rainy and ugly up here and sleety and cold, you can uh, take an adventure down to the Florida Keys for a week. So not a, not a bad way to break, to spend spring break. Um, they do have the STEM program, and it's it's really going well in terms of of uh, there. I know that at one point they were helping to rebuild the coral reefs in Florida. So, you go ahead, Elizabeth. There we go. Northern Tier. Northern Tier is the oldest high adventure base. It does predate um, Philmont and uh, Sea Base. Uh, operates out of Ela, Minnesota, out of Cokin. Uh, the Bassett program for right now, any of y'all that might have experience with Bassett, which is considered the ultimate high adventure wilderness experience because you are way out there. Um, they actually fly you in on float planes to get to your canoes. Uh, but the Bassett program is closed for this summer. And next summer, um, they are looking for a medical officer uh, to live out there. So if uh, if there's anybody in the audience tonight that's a that's a physician that would really like to to get into themselves and experience the true depth of nature 
Um, Northern Tier is looking for a a wilderness a, a, a wilderness medical officer who's willing to live in the back back country for the summer. Uh, Ogpic we talked about earlier is a is a winter adventure. Uh, they do supply all the gear, so it's 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 not uh, overly expensive gear wise, but it is quite an adventure. We have a, a quite a few folks on the high venture committee who have been multiple years to the to the Ogpic program and, and highly, highly recommend it. So um, on the High Adventure Committee, we have a lot of people with a lot of experience who have been to these programs. So they have firsthand experience for any of these things you'd like to talk to us about. Um, so they can help you plan programs or just give you basic information. And then the Summit, which is our newest High Adventure base in West Virginia, um, they have programs, specific programs um, they have the wheels program, which is mountain biking, skateboarding, uh, ATVs, those types of things. And then they have the shooting sports program, which is rifle shotgun. Um, it's actually called field and stream. So there's fishing as well. There's a climbing week where you can go climb the new river gorge, which is world-class rock for an entire week. Uh, and then there's the whitewater program where they put you on the new river in, uh, kayaks, for a week, guided uh, kayaks, and then on the the uh, one of the days, you run the the New River Gorge National Park uh, whitewater section. So uh, that's pretty cool too. It's all base camp, so you come back to the same camp every night, and you eat dining hall. So it's it's uh, pretty uh pretty easy pretty easy high adventure base for you. Go ahead, Elizabeth. So here's our high adventure trips for this year. Um, we still have the Lenhoxen backpacking trip. Um, the cool thing about this was a couple of scouts called Elizabeth and said, we'd like to go backpacking at Lenhoxen, but we don't have any adults. So they reached out to the High Adventure Committee and two, two members of the High Adventure Committee said, sure, we'll take scouts backpacking at, at Lenhoxen for a week. So two of our adults jumped in. They're, they're leading this trip. We have four scouts signed up, two adults. So we have all the, all the adults are covered. Um, we have the wilderness first aid requirement covered, so that's all done. So if you have scouts or adults who would like to spend a week backpacking at Lenhoxen, um, feel free to join us. It's There's still six spots available, um, but those we, those will be going quickly, I'm sure. Um, we're running the Lenhoxen High Adventure Canoeing Trek. I'm actually the lead adult on that. I have I actually teach paddlecraft safety for the, high, for the aquatics committee. I'm a level four... Uh, canoe instructor for the American Canoe Association. So um, we're going to go out. We're going to have a great time. I, I went two years ago and had such a great time. I decided to do it again. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, sea base still has one youth spot available. Um, that's a, that's a crew based thing. <clears throat> and we're trying something new. Um, any of y'all that are familiar with Hiker Re, which is an older scout high adventure program where they go out to the 4-H center in front royal and uh spend spend the weekend backpacking and or not backpack but hiking but also um it's a no chuck box camp so you can't you, you're not car camping you have to hike in all your gear so the high adventure committee is is hosting this first year scout high adventure experience we're going to go to F prince william forest park we have a group campsite already already reserved for that weekend so the goal is we're going to take first year, first and second year scouts who are not old enough for a normal high adventure experience to come out. We're going to do about a five or six mile day pack hike. And then we're going to have backpacking food on backpacking stoves for dinner and backpacking food for breakfast on uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, and we're going to do some some essentially high adventure experience for younger scouts so that they can begin thinking about what they want to do when they're so if, if they're if they're 12 now and want to do that this this coming fall they'll be ready for Lund Hoxson in 2025 so that's our goal there is to get to get younger scouts involved in high adventure so that's uh that's in the planning stages right now we do have the space available this summer we have an adult leader from the high adventure committee who's leading a trip to the um, wind river range in in wyoming uh, he has already put together this trip for the Sawtooth Mountain Idaho Backpacking Provisional Expedition. The thing about this trip is it costs about half of what a Philmont trip costs. It's not as long, 
but it's definitely a, a high adventure wilderness experience. Um, it's uh, it's for older scouts. It's for scouts that have some backpacking experience. So we're going to expect um, uh, we have training activities for this. We have crew activities. Um, we talk about gear. There's a lot of lot goes into this trip, but registration for the 25 trip opens on June the 1st. So if you have older scouts or or you have a unit that's interested um, this year, um, we have 20 people going uh, this year. So that's kind of the maximum we can take. So I think we have the limit is 20 for the 25 trip as well, but uh, should be an awesome trip. Uh, the guys already got it laid out. We'll have uh, more information on it when registration opens June the 1st. So, and we have a vacancies list. So if you are planning a trip and you lose a couple of scouts or an adult, um, there's a vacancy list that the high adventure committee maintains where you can find folks to go. Or if you think you'd like to go to a high adventure base and your unit doesn't have scouts that want to go or aren't old enough to go or whatever, um, you can jump on with somebody else. We do recommend that you start looking at this in the fall before you start getting ready to go in the summer. That way um, you're going to get, uh, you'll be able to get with that unit and participate in their training activities. Um, probably, you'd probably, it'd probably be a little tough to, to jump on to a Philmont crew for this summer, uh, unless you have prior backpacking experience or that type of things. Cause uh, we, you, the, uh, the units are, it's, it, there's a lot of training that goes into these high adventure trips and they, you want to get together with a crew early on. So, but yeah, we do maintain this. So, all right. So thank you very much. This is the resources for our high adventure bases. Um, we also are on the high adventure committee. There's our website. Um, feel free to jump onto that. My information is there and contact us for anything you'd like to do uh, concerning high adventure and uh, talk to your units we need to fill that lead hawks and backpacking and canoe base uh, trip this summer as well. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, thank you so much, Mark and Dan, for, for taking the time to talk us about high adventure opportunities. I see that we have four questions in our Q&A box. So, Sarah, I'm going to ask that you facilitate those questions. All right. So our first question, this will be for Mark, because it's about the lead hawks and canoeing trek. Uh, how big are the dry bags? So we have multiple dry bags. Uh, most of them were probably 20 liter, but we are given multiple dry bags by the outfitter. So we usually get as many as we need. Um, now it is a canoe trip. So you don't need to bring lots and lots of camping gear. You need a tent, a sleeping bag, uh, some river clothes and some dry clothes for the, for the shore. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You so, might want a sleeping pad. Well, yeah, a pad. Yeah. yeah. It's on the, there's, um, um, uh, there's a, a gear list that's available through Goshen. If you go to, there it is. Yeah. So if you go to Goshen, uh, Lynn Hoxon, uh, there's a, there's a guide there that says all the information you need as to what you need to bring. But um, the dry bags are provided by the outfitter uh, and they hold all our food and they hold all our stuff that needs to be kept dry. So you put everything in the dry bags, put everything in dry bags, all set right. my, set my camp chair. All right. I definitely so, bring a camp chair. So a, a tent, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and a camp chair are absolutely essentials. All right. And everything goes in the dry bags. Everything goes in dry bags. All right. Uh, this would be Dan or Mark. Uh, on the River Trek camping stops, do you need bear bags? How, how do you protect your stuff from critters? We're given bear bags and we have bear ropes that are provided by. Um, we'll, we'll have that provided. We bring, I'll bring, I'll be bringing that as part of the crew. All right. Let's see. Uh, are there bear bag cables? There are not. So using trees we'll, at the campsite. We'll be hanging from trees. Yes. All righty. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll take this one. This is on the health form. Some states require form B2. So that's the medication administration to be signed by a doctor. Is Virginia one of them? Uh, no, Virginia is not one of them. It's just the parent guardian signature. All right. And then uh, we have a question about some of the certifications. We've talked about how wilderness first aid is required for the different treks. Uh, for the river trek, we require paddlecraft safety. Um, if it's not offered in the local council, we offer it here in National Capital Area Council, 
Um, but what should folks do if it's not offered in their council? Uh, we, depends on depends on how far away they are because we have we have two classes coming up. We have one in May and one in June here. So I mean, uh, we have had folks coming from as uh, far away as Ohio to take our paddlecraft safety classes. And if you were planning to go in the future, uh, don't you also offer paddlecraft safety classes in August and September? We do have September and August, August and um, the 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 certification is good for two years. All right. I, so, I think so, with. I, I think part, can, part of the part of the concern that we're getting from some of our units having you know answered some of those emails is that not all of them are able to come to the National Capital Area Council. I know some of the people that are on our call right now are not from National Capital Area Council. Um, so I think my my initial recommendation would be contact your council, whether that be their outdoor and programs um, department or something of equivalent. I know that not every council has an aquatics group, um, but Mark, is there an equivalent um, training like through the American Canoe Association that you feel would be the equivalent for paddlecraft safety if that's not something that they're able to, to take? The American Canoe Association does sponsor um, canoe um, training. So there's the there's four levels, uh, one through one through four. Um, one is being the easiest. Now it would really be up to Goshen as to whether a, a, an ACA class would be acceptable versus having paddlecraft safety because I believe your requirement is paddlecraft safety. Is that correct? Yeah, on our website it is paddlecraft safety, but. Um... You know, we I if you, if you I feel get, as the yeah, director if you, that if you're unable to to get that training and American Canoe Association class is available as well, we would rather you have that than not have anything at all. Right. So of course the one sees are so yeah. If you're looking for the level that you need for the American Canoe Association, you would you should get at least a level two tandem canoe certification to run the James River Trek. Level, there's level one, level two. Level one is kind of like if I'm paddling across a lake. Level two is more of a moving water class. Um, mm -hmm. So you should be at least level two certified tandem um, to be equal to paddlecraft safety. And Mark, do you need to get level one before level two or can you? Yes, it's a, it's a progression. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Sure. All right. Uh, we'll wait another minute or so to see if we get any more questions. Well, um, if people come up with questions later, Elizabeth, uh, where should they direct those questions to? Sure. So I would start with going to the Goshen Scout Reservation webpage. And my email, as well as Dan's email, are available there. Um, mine is my first and last name, Elizabeth um, dot Warren at scouting.org. Um, and Dan's is Len Hoxon at go, go to Goshen org, and Mark's um, information is available on the High Adventure Committee webpage. Um, so we'll be posting uh, this webinar as well as the PowerPoint slides on We Own Adventure within the next few days. So those will be available there. But a quick Google search of Goshen Scout Reservation and NCAC High Adventure Committee are going to get you um, our information fairly quickly. I don't think we have any more questions in the box, so we're going to go ahead and, and close that there. Thank you all so much for spending um, a good chunk of your evening with us to learn about uh, Council of National High Adventure Programs. Thank you to Sarah, Dan, and Mark for presenting. Um, you know, we, we hope to see you out on the trail or out on the river this summer. Thank you all so much.